can't preach after all that singing, you would win. <laughs> This for you. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights. And among these rights are life, and liberty, and pursuit of happiness. That's not all of them. That's among them. Among these rights are life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. To secure these rights. Governments are instituted among men. Good men give up their individualism and be a servant to you and I, Romans 13, 4. Right. Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers, yes. never any unjust powers, right. deriving their just powers from the consent of the good born. That's you and I. That's right. They do things because you and I say that's why the way we want America to be wrong. They are not your master, they are your servant. Amen. And it's high time that we remind them and put them back in that position. Amen. Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governor. And that, whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, it's the right of the people to alter. Right. We're trying that at the polls, it's not working too well. Or abolish it, bad government. One of the problems in America today is that Christians do not know, first of all, why we have America. It's called the Declaration of Independence. It was true when they declared their independence from Great Britain and they established it so that you and I today in 2020 can realize that these are the same rules that America is run by. Yeah. Yes. There's no law in the Declaration, but there's a foundation for you and I to be able to pass on to our children. I've had the privilege of having a great-grandson. Oh, I ask myself over and over again, God, I know that I'm responsible for what my great-grandson is going to be living under if Jesus tarries. And I'll have to apologize to my great-grandson. I can remember my daddy. He used to fuss at me when I teaching, I've been teaching biblical constitutionalism for the last 35, 40 years. And he would say to me, Son, you know, you... you you're going to stop my social security check from coming. I said, no, Daddy. I said, yeah. you'll always get your social security check. Because he's an old man that wouldn't last long. So, uh, and uh, he, he would be a little sharp. So one day I, I said to him, Daddy, won't you come go with me? I took him down to the pawn shop. What had happened was he had just sold a house that he had in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, for $64,000. He bought it for $16,000 back when. And he said to me, he said, Paul, said, I made some money on that. <laughs> I said, you did? He said, yeah, I made some money on that one. I said, well, come go with me a second. I took him down to the pawn shop. There are a bunch of silver dollars lined up there, you know. And uh, he started looking at that. He'd look at me, and he'd go back and he'd look at that. He'd come over to me and he said, Son, somebody stole my money. <laughs> you see, those silver dollars, were they were requesting 12 Federal Reserve notes for one silver dollar. Yeah, right. And if you and I can remember, yeah. you used to be able to take a paper dollar, it said at the bottom of it, bear on demand one silver dollar and you go down to the bank and you trade it in for one silver dollar. Yep. But now it takes 10, 12 Federal Reserve notes to get one silver dollar and he sold his house for 64,000 Federal Reserve notes when he should have got $164,000. He said, somebody stole my money. <laughs> he was on my side from then on. But here's the problem. Until it hit his pocketbook, it didn't matter. Yeah, that's right. Right, right. Mm -hmm. that's it. You want to know something about the rest of the Christians? 
Same way. Yeah. Yeah. I've traveled this nation 35 years teaching biblical constitutionalism. Until he hits their billfold, they're saved, sanctified, and satisfied. They're going to get up and get there and sit down and sit there. I'm sorry, God, that people have that attitude. I, I said to Brother Harding here the, the other day, <clears throat> if I'm sick and tired of it, no wonder God vomits. That's what that word puke means there in Revelation 3.20. Yeah, no, no, listen, can you imagine God and all that He has done and all that He wants to do and He looks down at us and it turns His stomach? Right. It's, it's amazing. And we just go on like it's nothing. I sent this to President Trump and told him that I was going to send him some more with some signatures on it. I am but one saved through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Love for and by my God and my country. We the signers of this declaration hereby pledge our lives, our possessions, and our sacred honors to return America to the biblical and constitutional foundation of her religion. Civil and government, uh, federal government for our freedoms. We will not remove the ancient landmarks. Proverbs 22 verse 28 through 29. We pledge our primary allegiance to Almighty God and to no other. For so is the will of God. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 15. We will not bow to any government that would impose a reign of tyranny over biblical-based religious conscience, convictions. For the Word of God is and is a discerner. What a word that word is. I'm going to preach on it tonight. Discerner. That dis word discerner means a sifter. You know, when I, when I was chefing, <clears throat> I needed flour for my breading my fish or chicken or something. And I always had a nice big sifter. And the reason I had it was to get all the lumps. Yeah. And, 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 and that's, what God, that's what God calls the, the Word of God. It's a sifter. Yeah. <clears throat> he said, we will not bow to any government. That would impose a reign of tyranny over our biblical-based religious convictions. Amen. To the extent that the law and the leadership of our beloved America adheres to her foundation principles as immortality in our Constitution, we will be loyal citizens. And if there be any other commandment, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Romans 13 now. To extend that America deny her God, persecute the people of God, trample her own constitution, we will oppose her at the threshold. We cannot speak the things which we have seen and heard. Acts 4, 17 through 20. We will not yield up the minds and the souls of our children to a godless state. Amen. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 3. We will not sacrifice our principles on the altar of expediency. For we are His workmanship. Ephesians 2, 10. We will not be restrained from recognizing God within all areas of the life of America. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, Matthew 6, 33. We will proclaim the word of God freely throughout the whole range of the institutional life of this nation. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Amen. Romans 1, 16. If we are jailed, for the performance of righteousness, 
we will proclaim the salvation of Jesus Christ boldly to every warden, to every guard, and to every inmate. Because all power, Jesus said, and then he said, go ye. And then he said, teach him, I have commanded you. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. I'm going to give each one of you preachers, and if I have left over anybody that wants one, I'll be at the table tonight. I want you to have one, but I also have a place for you to put your signatures. Because I sent this, I framed one and sent it to President Trump, and I told him I had one coming with a bunch of preacher's signatures on it. I hope you don't let me down. Because that's what we believe. Amen? Amen. amen. It's either amen or oh me, so amen. just pick your side right now. Amen. I was discussing with God, you know how that goes. Because I wanted to do something else tonight. And he said, no, you better do what I told you to do last week. And I said, yes, sir. I had a daddy, big daddy. He told me how to say, yes, sir. Take your Bibles with me and <clears throat> turn to the book of Hebrews. I always like to preach and I always like to be invited back and I always uh, like to let people know I'm, I'm, I'm traveling now more than ever before. And I... If you need somebody for, to preach for you, I'd be glad to. Yet at the same time, I know I'm going to upset somebody. You just have to get over it. That's all I can say. We were enjoying a lunch. I was enjoying it. He was with me. And I asked him the question, what's the most important thing What's the most important tool in being a soul winner? What's the most important tool in being a soul winner? What would your answer be? Yes, sir. What Christ has done for you. Sir? What Christ has done for you. Okay, good. I heard read your lips a little while ago. No, this other gentleman, your brother Tom, is that what your name? The Bible. Sir? The Bible? I didn't hear you. The what? Bible! Oh, what was that again? <laughs> they didn't hear you outside. <laughs> the, <laughs> the Bible. Amen. Yeah. Right. The Bible. Right. Not that yours is wrong, <clears throat> but here's the reason I say that. First of all, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse number 12. Yes. Said for the word of God. Yes. That's the Bible. That's, yes, and 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 I say I don't mean to hurt nobody's feelings. I, please understand me. But my experience is is nothing. I don't want them to love Paul Davis. I want them to love Jesus. Amen. I'd like for them to love me, but you know, preachers invite me to to come preach, and they'll say, "Well, how much would it cost to get you here?" I said, "Well." <clears throat> You just tell them I'll come for a love offering, but just tell them I'm mighty lovable. <laughs> but the Word of God, yes. see, that's what's important. Because it's, it's quick, it's alive. Yes, it is. See, that's what the word quick means, alive. It's alive. The Word of God, it's alive. Amen. And then, dear brother, the next thing we need, we need some godly power yeah. to defeat Satan. Yes, Amen or oh me? Amen. Yes. It's quick and it's powerful. And then because God knows more about it than I do, He knows that we got to cut through some things that, that, that's dross and, and needs to be thrown away. He said it's quick and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword coming and going. 
And then he said it's piercing, even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. Piercing. I want the word. It's like I told you the other night. A lady went out of the church and she said, Oh, preacher, that was so good. You just stepped all over my toes. I said, I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. She said, No, no, no. I like it when they step all over my toes. I said, I'm so sorry. She said, Why? I said, I meant to hit you in the heart. The word of God is piercing. It's your piercing to the heart. You see, your gizzard and your liver and your, all your inner, inner organs, doesn't, it doesn't amount to a hill of beans until you get to the heart. When you get to the heart of things, you're going to be able to do something with it. God cuts away the dross. Then He pierces your heart. To the dividing of the sun asunder the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And then watch the rest of it. And is a discerner. Yes. The word of God is a discerner. The word of God is a sifter. Wants to get all those those lumpy my idea of things or well my denomination thinks this or my mom and daddy thought this or uh, the, all these little these little lumpy parts of, of my idea about about religion i'm glad i'm not a religious person i'm a christian I'm a, it's, god said that the word of god is a discerner it's a sifter it wants to sift us look, look what he says of the thoughts yes. and the intent huh? yeah. of my gizzard. Is that what he said? No. Huh? No. He said what? Heart. My heart. My heart. We had the privilege of raising two boys. My precious wife raised them and I spanked them. <laughs> I learned that from my daddy. <laughs> but anyway. Now, from the heart. I love to put my arms around my two boys and just, just walk with them and talk with them and, and, and we talk business together and we talk church together and we talk Christian school together and, and just, 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 I mean, they're men, boy, and I, I, just, I just love them. I miss my boys so much. But the gospel had to get to their heart regardless of what his last name was. I told you maybe this morning or one of the youngest one in college, Christian college, been through, I've been his pastor his whole life. Calls me one night, get mama on the phone. Mama gets on the phone. In our church, when I pastored, we've had the privilege of building five churches and three schools in our lifetime. Our boys were, they were good boys. I know yours are too, but not as good as mine were. But they're all boys. My youngest one, they'd, we'd always have them go to church camp, you know, and they'd, he'd go to camp and they'd show them around the camp and and uh, to get the boys together and show them around, they said, well, now, these are the Johns, so that you know, you know what's going on. But he didn't like that. His name was John. <laughs> he went back to his cabin, got him a bunch of cardboard, and he wrote Fred. And he went, he's one of my pound Fred. He said, those are, I'm John, those are Fred's, you know. <laughs> That's the kind of guy he is, you know. But he calls me from college one night, and he says, Daddy got saved today. Oh, I said, son, that's great. I said, tell me about it. Ron Comfort was preaching. When he got through, he said, uh, I went, and this is a college of 3,000 students. He said, I went and found my brother. <laughs> I went and found my brother so he could lead me to Christ. The Word of God. The Word of God. The Word of God. It's the Word of God. 
But I want to ask you something. Let me see. Can I pick on somebody tonight? Huh? Is it all right if I pick on somebody? Well, I won't pick on you. But I'm going to take that little fellow on the end of that second bench there. Can I pick on him? Come on up here, preacher. I, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. I'm not, these, are, these are not stump me questions or anything like that. This is... Hang over to what? You told your wife to put the gun up, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you do before you started preaching? Uh, I really wasn't doing much anything. I was... They told me that he was good, and I said, for what? And they said, nothing. I said, oh, okay. Yeah, that's about right. No. You didn't have a profession? No, I was, uh, I, well, I was doing drywall and stuff. Drywall stuff? Yeah, drywall, and then I went into... Uh, I was seeing that he was helping. Well, let's stick with a drywall business. Okay. Number one, you got to have stilts to do drywall business, don't you? Yeah, and I'm a big guy. I ain't too good on stilts. Uh, and not too good on that. No, I can tell that. <laughs> uh, but that, and, 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 and drywall business, you got to have a trial, don't you? Yeah. Uh, you got to know how to use it, don't you? Yeah. Two sides of it, don't you? Huh? Yeah. And once while you get a hole in the thing, how, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. You're going to patch it up, ain't you? Yeah. yeah. Go back over. Then you got to come back the second time and go over it again, right? Make it smoother. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Did you ever go to work with your and leave your trial at home? Uh, yeah, I can't get nothing done there now. Huh? Yeah. What'd they do then? I had to go back and get I it. I had to go back and get it. You yeah. wasn't with a plug nickel, was you? No. Wasn't much with it, but I mean, it <laughs> was worse without it, wasn't you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, and sometimes you had to get the stilts. You weren't too good on them. No. You wobbled. Yeah. Uh, you do that almost now, but anyway, you wobble a little bit, didn't you? Yeah. Stilts weren't too good, but if you if you if you were putting some up on the ceiling and you didn't have your stilts, yeah, you ain't gonna get much done, are you? Yeah, no, I couldn't reach very well. Every once in a while, you had to put a nail in something, right? Yeah, you had to not to and know how to put that nail in so it don't go through, right? Yeah, you don't hit too hard. I told you it wouldn't be many hard questions. <laughs> See, you can answer every one of them. That's good. I'm gonna let you go sit down because okay. I'm gonna jump on you now. Okay, okay. all right, good. Well, he was a drywall man. I was a chef. Yeah, I, I was a chef. I, I was one of them big boys. I used to feed General MacArthur. He uh, had a, a penthouse right next to my boss's penthouse. And I'd get to go in there and talk to General MacArthur. Whew. Huh? Man, I'm telling you what else. He's something else. Hated Truman to the day he died. Yeah. I mean it. He did. And uh, I did the first Republican Party for Eisenhower and Nixon when they first ran for president. I was in the uppity ups. Yeah. I fed, Hubert, I fed Hubert Humphreys too, but if I'd known then what I know now, I'd have really fed that guy. <laughs> Excuse me, Lord. <laughs> Shift in hotels and all over the country. I had a toolbox too. Yeah. In my toolbox, I had uh, two French knives with 10 inch one and an 8 inch one. I had a 14 inch roll speed slicer. Had a boning knife, two forks, <coughs> three wooden spoons. Because when something gets scorched at the bottom and you use a wooden spoon, it won't come up. Use a metal spoon, you'll take it up and get it in. But if you use a wooden spoon, it doesn't do that, see? So go out and buy you some wooden spoons, Mama. Okay, fine. <coughs> and then I had a steel there that I used to sharpen my knives with. Well, one day I go into work and I, I got my toolbox. I set it down. I got to cut down a half a beef because we're going to have a brief strawing off today with uh, maybe a clam chowder soup. So I get my, my 14 inch roast beef slicer and I'm going to butcher down that side of beef. No, you ain't blade about this long and it wobbles like that and if I go to try to cut it would and that's real thin blade it hit a bone it put a nick in I don't want that so I gotta well I I'm gonna I'm gonna make it some cut up some salad and coleslaw and some lettuce and and so I I, I get out my bony knife to cut the saw and the and the lettuce up I ain't gonna get much done am I but here's what I'm talking about Gentlemen, you had your tools, and I had my tools. 
But when I walked out of my house, the first thing I walked out of my house as was a Christian. Not a chef. The second thing I walked out of my house as was a chef. And if I went to work without my toolbox, I'm absolutely no good at all to the chef that I'm working under or to the hotel. Right? I need to back up to get a paycheck, wouldn't I? Yep. I walk out of my house as a Christian. Am I prepared to go to work? Where's your toolbox? This is my toolbox. This is my toolbox. You got a toolbox? Huh? Oh, you can't go to work, can you? You got a toolbox? Now, preacher, you, you need a shirt with a toolbox. My wife won't buy me a shirt without a toolbox. I'm serious. You got a toolbox? Sir? Yeah. Preacher, you got a toolbox? Come on, man, help me out. We're going to send your wife to the store and get you a shirt with a toolbox. Oh, you got a toolbox? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, you got a toolbox. What did, what, did, what did God tell us to do what did, in, in, in Matthew 28, 18? What did He tell us to do? Go, Go ye? Huh? Is that what He told us to do? Yeah. Where about? To the living room? No. Go ye. Out in the field. But maybe, maybe, maybe I forgot. And I didn't say to God, Good morning, God. I'm going to work today. Would you lead me to somebody that needs something about you? Huh? Every morning. Why? I want to meet somebody that, that, God, that, that, that wants to learn something about God. Every morning. That's my, that's my prayer. Every morning. Why? I'm a Christian. Oh, you're a preacher. No, no, no. I'm a Christian. Oh, well, you, you're a doctor. No, that's like the curl on a pig's tail. That doesn't do nothing for the ham, so we can't go without one. God, I need, you lead, I need you to lead me somebody today. Do you have your tools with you? Yes, sir. I pick up my Bible, the Word of God, that's sharp, that, that, that's piercing, that's cutting, yes. that's sifting the thoughts. I put it in my pocket. Get my toolbox. I'm going to put my tools in there. If I cut down that, try to cut down that half a beef with my roast beef slicer, am I going to get any work done? Absolutely not. I've got to have my boning knife to go in there and cut that meat away from the bone. Not chip my knife and, 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 and not let it slip off. And cut. I've got to be right there with that boning knife to cut it away. I'm meeting on somebody and we sit down and I told you about the bad day I had. I thought I would have him. Went to the Waffle House and drank coffee. That's how you solve a bad day. <laughs> Man sitting next to me. Says, Preacher, will you talk to me? I'd be glad to. Will you step outside and talk with me? Well, I don't know whether to pucker up or put them up, but I went ahead and stepped outside with them. He said, all this going on over in Israel, does that mean that Jesus is coming? Yes, sir, it sure does. Well, if that's the case, I'm going to die and go to hell. Can you help me? Amen. Do you have your tools? Huh? Do you know how to use them? I say, sure, let's sit down and talk about it. Didn't say nothing about me. Why? Who am I? That the king would live and die for so I'm going to talk about me. No. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me go over a few things with you. Okay. You can read, can't you? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Always ask them. That's a polite manner. We go through the scriptures. All the way through. 
I said, well, what do you want to do? I said, oh, I want to get saved. I said, well, all right. Romans 10, 9. Thou shalt confess to thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Yes. Who is Jesus? I said, well, now, there's, there's several names for Christ. What are some of them? We finally get to the word Savior. I said, if, if <laughs> the Savior means that, that somebody is lost, who is it? Well, he said, it's me. I said, what do you mean you're lost? Well, he said, if I die, I'll go to hell. I said, you're not satisfied with that? He said, no. I said, all right. So you can tell God, God, if I die today, I'd go to hell. I'm not satisfied with that. I need a Savior. And they tell me that Jesus is the only one. I need Jesus. Amen. Some people say, well, he's saved. No, he's not. That's not the end of the verse. That's just one half of the plan of salvation. Because people say, Thou shalt confess in thy mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe. You can be saved. Believe what? I'm talking about my tools. Believe what? I've got to believe that God raised Christ from the dead. Before you can be saved. Because it's only after that that it says thou shalt be saved. But I say to the gentleman, why do you have to believe that God raised Christ from the dead? Well, he looks at me like a calf at a new gate and wants an answer. My answer is this. You ever tried to talk to a dead man? Huh? You ever tried to talk to a dead man? And if, if I believe that Jesus is alive because God raised him from the dead, yes. guess what? Yes. I can say, thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul right go. now. Right. I can start talking with him because he's not dead. That's what it said. That's what it said. Where'd you get my tools? I got my tools out of my toolbox. Then I take him over there where it says that immediately he, he followed his Lord of baptism immediately. We talk about that a while. Then we're talking about Bible study. We talk about that a while. Well, am I supposed to read my Bible every day? No, no, no. You're supposed to study your Bible every day. Well, that might take an hour. Get up an hour early. <laughs> it's hard for me to get up now. Well, stay up an hour late. That's not hard for you to do. That you're doing it now. Every day. <clears throat> well, yeah. Uh, so he, he asked the Lord to come into his heart and he, he, he confessed to Jesus and he, 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 he believes beyond a shadow of a doubt that God raised him from the dead. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my, I'm going to get another tool out of my toolbox. I'm, I'm going to go over there to 1 John. I go over there to 1 John. I look at chapter 5. And I get down to verse number 13. I said, look what he said. He said, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. I said, who do you write this to? Well, he said, me. I said, that's right. These, these five chapters are written strictly to you so that you'll get a foundation of, your, of, of Christianity, of, of why I'm a Christian. These things have not everything in the Bible, Scripture, you know. So I better take it. Out. And, 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 and I said, these things have not written unto you that believe on them that ye may. What's the next word? No. no. How many people have a think so, hope so? Are you saying, well, I hope so I am? I say, you'll die and go to hell. Well, I think I am. Well, how do you think it? How can how can you think and tell me? That you're going, to, that you think you're going. To, how are you going? To, what are you going to tell me? Didn't have the proper tools. I want to show them what the proper tool is. That these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Amen. Now, watch the last part of that verse. It's the second part of the plan of salvation, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Now, boy, he take that out and stick it in his pocket. He can walk around with that all day long, can he? Sure can. But I don't stop there with him. I said, son, I want you to go just one step further. Look at that verse 14. Look at that verse 14. And this is the confidence. Whew. Man, I'm like a Presbyterian child. And this is the confidence that we have in him. Huh? That if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth me. 
John 14, 13. Right there too. Yeah. I said, now, now that's who, who, who you asked to save you. And, 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 and uh, if that's who you ask to save you, uh, uh, that's who you're going to talk to every day. Yeah. Well, preacher, I don't know how to pray. You know how to talk? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that's prayer. Prayer is just a reverent word for communication between me and God. I said, now are you saved? He said, yes, sir. I said, you know what? He said, yes, sir. I said, when, when, when a man, when somebody gives you a gift, what do you say to him? Said, thank, you. thank you. Well, why don't you tell Jesus, thank you. Now, he just got saved, and now he's going to talk to the Lord and tell him, thank you. Amen. Thank you for saving me. Yeah. Yeah. Your tools, you're a Christian. Are you, are you a working Christian? Is it on your mind all the time? It's impossible. I, we have a home of 30 men down there. But we work, I work with addiction people. And, and they, like to, they like to try to kid me a little bit. And they walk up and look in my pocket. Yeah, yeah, you said still, yeah it's still there. Yeah. I have a precious daughter-in-law, my son in Texas. And about every three years she buys me a new one. She knows it won't last. Uh, no, they buy, she buy, and, and I get it. I, I, it yeah. I won't go anywhere without it. My wife won't buy me a shirt without a pocket in it. Why? L ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a Christian. What are you? I'm a Christian. I'm glad to be a Christian. Amen. And if I could, I'd say I'm proud to be a Christian. Amen. I don't want to say it that way. But I sure am glad that I know Jesus. I sure am glad that I can talk about Jesus. I sure am glad that I can help a soul yes. come out of his misery Amen. because of who Jesus is. Right. Not me. My education ain't worth a flying flip in a hailstorm. <laughs> but the book is. Yes. Amen. The Word of God. The Word of God. That's why I spoke the other night on the subject, Who's God? Who's God? If, if, if God is, is who He's supposed to be in your heart, yes. then, then you want to yes. be in His book. Amen. Learn from Him. Yes. I, I, I was talking with one of the, maybe it was Paul David, I don't know, it was either Paul David or J.J. Maybe, maybe it was J.J. I was talking to him about, about <clears throat> being a Christian. Because you see, <clears throat> I want you to hang on to this word. I really want you to hang on to it now. The Bible says ye must be born. Somebody help me. Again. Huh? Again. I didn't hear you. Again. What? Again. Uh, if there's an again, that means there has been one before it. Huh? Yeah. Okay. When I'm first born, do I know how to talk? You, you should have seen us when Paul David was first born, our, our first boy. Man, we were excited. We took him home from the, and before we got home from the hospital. We stopped off at the steakhouse and we had sat him in his chair and mom and I, we ordered three steaks and we... No, I didn't. Why? He didn't even know what a steak was, much less eat one and couldn't eat if I cut it up. He must be born... Again, ladies and gentlemen, think about this when you're leading people to Christ. There they are. I tell a lot of my men in my men's home, this is you. Why you act the way you act, this is you. You say I've been saved five years, she ain't got out of the cradle yet. See? I remember when I was a little fella. And daddy, oh I'd always like to go to daddy except when he went to Sears. The only place Daddy goes when he goes here is a tool shop. What's, in, what's exciting about walking through the tools in Sears, you know? You probably like it. I didn't. But anyway, but I'd have to hang on to his hands. I'd hang on to his finger for a while. I'd walk around. Pretty soon I got a little older and I was able to hold his hand. Pretty soon I got a little older and I went my own way. <laughs> I went with my own way. I, 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 I could walk around by myself. 
Because I was born. I'm born again. How much have I grown since I was born again? Am I still in the cradle? The people that we lead to Christ, do we do we have them in the cradle? Uh, yeah, some of it, some of us are throwing the babies out with the bathwater. Well, he's 20 years old. God said, man, he ought to be able to teach. He don't even know how to walk. He don't know how to talk. He don't know how to eat. He don't know how to do nothing. That's why Jesus taught us to be disciples. How can I be a disciple without what? The Bible. Without His Word. It, it, <clears throat> for the Word of God is what's going to train that boy. Yes. Yeah. The Word of God and my... I used to tell the boys, they was acting bad, said, bring me to 42. That's my belt size. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't the 42 that, that, that trained these boys to be the, to be the men they are today. It was the Word of God. Amen. It was the Word of God. And if you... Mama, daughter, granddaughter, daughter-in-law, daddy, yeah. son, yeah. grandson, my case, great-grandson. I better learn so that, because they, they're all going to say it. I, I, I won't be like daddy is. Daddy over there sucking on a big old cigar. Guess what your boy's going to do? You, you want to know something? Did you know that God didn't plant any seeds? But He does promise a harvest. Huh? God don't plant any seeds. But He does promise a harvest. Well, my boy out sowing wild oats, think we're just going to reap. Huh? No. You get him in the Word of God. It's the Word of God that's powerful. Yes. My boy thought 42 was, but... No, not not like the word of God. And it's, it's 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 a quick, it's alive. And my boys can take the word of God all the way through death and wind up on the other side. Amen. Yeah. Not just through life. I want to teach them to live through death. Yes. I had my boys around when my precious daddy went to be with the Lord, and, and daddy said to, he he asked me. If, week or two before would, would I hold his hand when he entered the kingdom and, and uh, 4.30 in the afternoon he slips his hand out from the blanket goes up like this he knew I was standing right next to him and, and I took and just grabbed his little hand my boy was standing over there watching and daddy just went off <laughs> Whew, man. Huh? yeah why? because of the word of God Amen. daddy raised me on the word of God yes. I'm supposed to raise them on the word my boys are supposed to raise my grandchildren on the word of God Amen. Thank God if my three grandboys are saved, my, three, uh, my, my two granddaughters are saved. I remember I was going to, uh, I was taking my grandson with me, first grandson, uh, going up to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and, and he was sitting in the back seat, and, and he, he pulled himself up to the back seat, and he put his head over the, the back seat at me, my own eye, and, and he said, Papa, said I got saved last week. <laughs> oh, I said, it's great, son. Now we got a lot to talk about. Oh, I guess so, Papa. <laughs> and then he said, you, it was okay with him, you know. Papa said it, it's okay, you know. What's he doing today? Well, he traveled for four years for Pensacola Christian College. Now him and his wife work there. Yeah, why? Because the Word of God is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the, to, to the, to the asunder and, and dividing of even the soul and the spirit. That will make me get up in the morning and say, Good morning, God. I'd like to speak to somebody today. I don't ask him who. I just tell him I'd like to. Guess what he wants to do? He wants somebody to be spoke to, too. All he's looking for is a vessel Amen. that will go to work, have the proper tools, and know how to use them. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight for who you are. Yeah, my daddy's in heaven with you, but I call you my father, which art in heaven. Thank you. But God, tonight, I have no idea. And it, wouldn't, it, it doesn't matter to me anyway, because I can't do nothing about it. 
Could we 